Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, the number one place for data scientists, data engineers, and machine learning engineers. In my last video, we talked about three of the most common mistakes people make when searching for data science related jobs. If you haven't seen that video yet, you can check it out using the link above. Knowing what not to do is great, that's half the battle. However, sometimes you may not be making any obvious mistakes and still find yourself stuck in your job search. To successfully land your dream job, you also need to know what positive actions you can take. And that is what I'm going to cover in today's video. The reason I choose to talk about this topic is because I have received a lot of direct messages, emails, and inquiries from people on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Medium on this very subject. On top of that, I have done mock interviews and review interviews for over 100 people in the last year. All of these have given me a chance to observe and talk with a lot of people about their job search. With this experience, I have noted four key attributes that the people and job offers share. They take ownership, they are resourceful, they practice, and they are organized. In this video, I'm going to walk through these four things in detail and discuss how you can use them to unblock yourself and see progress in your job search. Let's get started. The first step to unblocking yourself is to take ownership of your job search. What exactly does this mean? It's your job search, how could you not be taking ownership, right? But what I mean is finding a job is not easy. You often have to deal with a lot of disappointment and frustration, and you are not alone if you are experiencing it. When that happens, it can be easy to start blaming your failure on things you cannot control. For example, you may find yourself thinking things like, I can't get the job because my educational background does not fit the job I want. I can't get the job because my school program did not teach me proper job searching skills. I can't get the job because the online course I took wasn't as helpful as it should have been. I can't get a job because that book I read did not have the answers to all my questions. All of these challenges may be true to some degree, but they take the jobs out of your hands. If you blame things you cannot change for your failure to get a job, you leave yourself with no way to do better. You are stuck waiting for someone to rescue you or something to change. It may feel good to blame external factors, and sometimes you may have a good reason. But in the end, that strategy will not help you make forward progress. Taking ownership means owning your failure. Be honest with yourself about where you can improve and what steps you can take to get there. You have to ask yourself what you can do instead of dwelling on things you cannot control. Now, I know if you have been stuck for a while, I know that taking ownership can sometimes sound like wishful thinking. How are you supposed to overcome your lack of experience or irrelevant educational background? Let's take me as an example. When I was looking for my first data science job, I had just finished my master's degree in transportation engineering. I knew that I was at a disadvantage because my educational background was not the best fit for a data scientist job. A computer science or a statistics degree would have made me look like a more competitive candidate. I was clearly at a disadvantage, but I wanted to make things happen. I did research, learned new skills, and did whatever else I could think of to overcome that obstacle and make myself the best candidate for a data science job I could possibly be. I also updated my strategy to look for jobs that could leverage my existing skills in transportation engineering. As most of you already know, hard work paid off. I landed a great job as a data scientist at a supply chain management startup, and I was able to grow professionally there. What I have observed from success people is that they take ownership. They tackle their problems with energy and try to fill in the gaps themselves, instead of waiting for anyone else to do it for them. So ask yourself, what do I need to do to better my chances to get a job, rather than what needs to change for me to get a job? I know it can be a difficult first step, but once you take ownership, you can start to take other positive actions to unblock yourself. With that being said, I want to share with you the second attribute from people who get job offers faster than others. In my opinion, it is the most important attribute, and that is being resourceful. Being resourceful is closely related to taking ownership. It means put in the time and effort with what you do have to make yourself a better candidate. Maybe you do not have a computer science degree, but you do have resources on the internet which you can access to learn the skills you need for a particular job. 
Maybe your school program did not provide interview training, but there are a ton of videos and articles that can help you with interview preparation. Maybe you don't know anyone who can refer you to your dream companies, but you could learn how to network and start building relationships with professionals. Resourcefulness basically means looking for the answer yourself first before you ask for help. It is okay to turn to others when you are struggling, but if you fail to even try to solve the problem yourself, you show both a lack of resourcefulness and a lack of responsibility, which will not help you in the long run. Of course, I understand that nowadays there is an overwhelming amount of resources out there. Maybe you want to be resourceful, but you are unsure where to start. I have summarized for you the three basic stages when looking for data science jobs. Finding jobs, getting interviews, and preparing for interviews. You can break your resource search down into these three categories to make things more manageable. For example, when you first start looking for a job, you want to be clear what kind of position you are targeting. You want to look at things like different types of data science positions and the requirements for each, so that you know which one is the best fit for you. I have a blog post on that which can help you get started. Once you are clear on your goal, you could start looking for resources about where to look for data science jobs and how to network. Take advantage of people who have done this before you and use the information they got from their experience. I have another blog post about how to get interviews if you want to see an example of the resources I'm talking about. When you are ready to prepare for interviews, you will need to switch up the resources you use. Now you want to collect common interview questions and company-specific interview questions so that you walk into interviews knowing what they expect from you. If you realize you have a knowledge gap in a certain area, there are many online resources and courses and starting materials that can help you. You can easily find answers to questions such as, what is A-B testing? How to crack product case interview questions? What are different kinds of hypothesis testing methods and when to use each of them? Use the resources that are available to you to make yourself the best candidate you can be. Those skills you learn in interview preparation will not only help you get a job, but also help you keep it and advance in your career. On top of that, you are training yourself to be resourceful, and this is critical to the success of your career and life. Resourceful people are able to rise to new challenges with greater ease and demonstrate a high level of self-motivation. Okay, so you have done the research and found some fantastic resources. Unfortunately, that is often not enough. Now that you have the information, you need to take full advantage of those resources. And that means practice. Practice may not sound like much fun, but think about it. How good are you at something if you only try it once? How much do you understand something if you only read it once? To land a job, you need to demonstrate not only a passing knowledge of a subject, but a great technical competency and a fluent understanding. And the only way to gain those things is to practice. Practice is also crucial for breaking down the overwhelming amount of resources and information you need to learn into practical goals. For example, I knew when applying for data science jobs that I had a knowledge gap in my SQL skills. To fix this, I practiced all SQL questions on LeetCode and HackerRank at least five times each. Through practice, I was able to turn the resources I found into personal knowledge that will help me in interviews. It is not enough to simply find resources that know the answers. You need to know the answers yourself, and that takes patience. You have to put in work to transfer knowledge or skill from the external source to your own brain. With practice, you grow more comfortable, which will also help put you at ease in interviews and allow you to shine at your best. Practice is how you ensure that the other work you have done in your job search really pays off. As you can see from the first three attributes, getting a job is a lot of work. You often have a lot of things in the air at once, and that means you need to be organized so you can stay on top of your job search. Being organized is the key for success planning and preparation. If you are interviewing with several companies, you have to make sure you know not only the dates and times, but also we you need to study most for each interview so you can plan your preparation accordingly. You also want your starting materials to be organized so you can easily locate the best resources for each situation. Not only this, being organized also keeps you from missing opportunities. You need to keep track of where you have sent your resume, who you have emailed, 
and who you are waiting to hear back from. Keep track of your progress with each company so that you always promptly reply and know when to send follow-ups. Now, many people have different ways of getting organized, and organization comes more naturally to some than others. If you do not already have your own organization system or find that you are struggling to stay organized, you can check out my other video on how to be organized for a basic guideline as well as useful tips and strategies. So those are the four attributes you need to unblock yourself and get your job search moving. I hope you have found them helpful and have identified some action steps you can take. All that being said, remember that getting a job is hard. I have noticed that people who do these four things tend to find the job they want faster, but that doesn't mean that you will immediately get a job if you do these things. Everyone's job search is unique. Above all, be persistent and continue working towards your goal even when you face failures. None of these tips will work if you do not keep trying. As that being said, if you want even more tips and resources for your job search, hit the notification bell for updates about new videos. My channel is full of videos about data science, data engineering, and machine learning interviews with information that could help anyone looking for a job in the tech industry. Thanks for watching, guys. Feel free to drop a comment below if you have questions or feedback for me. Stay tuned for my next video.